Michael Salomowitz is originally from Coney Island, Brooklyn, and has enjoyed his roller coaster ride as a career. He began writing scripts for Manhattan Cable TV, then moved to Hollywood and wrote for Warner Brothers. For several years, he was a freelance journalist, writing dozens of sports articles for national and trade publications and contributing to two nonfiction sports books. He also worked as a copywriter for a while. With a special place in his heart for theater, Michael has written and directed plays on stages from L.A. to Long Island to Boston. An evening of his one-act comedies will be produced next year at the Curtain Call Theater outside of Boston. His debut novel, Behind the Fourth Wall, was published this January by Black Rose Writing. As a brief synopsis, after losing his family, New York playwright Noah Miller goes to Cape Cod to escape his grief. There, he discovers the mystery behind his wife's death and the part he played in it. But to find forgiveness and redemption, Noah will have to come to terms with his transgressions and find the courage to face his darkest fears. Michael currently lives on Cape Cod with his lovely wife and is working on a new novel, a coming-of-age story based on Coney Island just after World War II, about a teenager, think of a young Holden Caulfield from Catcher in the Rye, that delves into the breakdown of family and his relationship with his father with a Jewish twist. It's J.D. Salinger meets Philip Roth. You can see Michael's full body of work and contact him at his website, michaelsalomowitz.com. My first professional job was as a scriptwriter for Manhattan Cable TV. And that was way back when I was in my 20s. And I was lucky enough to uh, connect with someone at Manhattan Cable uh, who... I don't even know if she read anything of mine. Uh, I guess I was, uh, uh, you know, recommended by somebody she knew. So she said, all right, we'll try you out. Why don't you write a couple of scripts? Here's the information we need for you to, you know, include in it. And then, um, you know, we'll see, you know, where we go from there. So I, I started writing scripts because it was a, it was a job. It was my first paid gig. I mean, I, I took the check that I got from them and I blew it up, framed it and put it up on my wall. Um, and then I, I guess writing theater uh, just kind of evolved naturally from that. I, I found that I had a knack for dialogue. Uh, I use a lot of dialogue in my book too, in my books, because um, I just, it's just natural for me to be able to use dialogue and I use it to, to further the story and, and the characters. So, I, I remember writing a play. Uh, I was taking a, a playwriting class at NYU at the time. And, um, and I wrote a play and we did a stage reading on stage. And I found I loved writing. I love the theater. I love live theater. And uh, so everywhere I went, because I went to Hollywood, we'll get into that a little later, I guess. Um, I connected with the theater, some theater and a writing group. And I was able to get my plays on stage, wherever it was. This is my book that was just published in January. It's called Behind the Fourth Wall. I don't know if the lighting is killing it or not. Um, and uh, yes, it's fiction. Uh, as far as the genre goes, um, that was kind of a difficult thing to come up with because I'm not good at, at trying to figure out genres. Uh, neither is my publisher, evidently. So um, we decided to call it um, uh, psychological fiction and also family relationships. Uh, and then there's a little bit of magical realism, which is also like paranormal, which is also a little like surreal. <laughs> so I, I have all of those. Uh, the funny thing is once I started sending it out to reviewers, they started coming back with back to me saying, you know, what you have here is literary fiction. And I go, okay, I, I can live with literary fiction. I like the sound of that. Uh, does that put me in the Hemingway class? You know, um, so it's a little bit of everything. Uh, and uh, sometimes it's literary fiction. Uh, if the other choices aren't there as far as genre, uh, otherwise I call it psychological fiction. What inspires you to write? Well, I, I'd have to say, um, I like to think of myself as a storyteller in one way or another, in whatever medium I'm writing in. And I've written in all of them. I've been lucky enough to kind of do a little bit of everything. Um, so I like to tell stories in my writing, uh, 
whether it's a play on the stage or a novel or an essay or whatever it is. And, and I like, you know, the reactions I get from people. Um, in, um, in a book, you get to read reviews or perhaps meet the reader, you know, who has questions for you. Why did you do this? Somebody asked me a question which I had a hard time answering, and I don't know if they cared for my answer, but, you know, you, I'm just trying to be honest and tell them, you know, why I did a certain thing or why I didn't do it. Um, I like to, you know, touch somebody when I write, I emotionally, on an emotional level. Um, in the theater, I like to make people laugh. Uh, I love standing in the back of the theater when my play is on stage and, and seeing if the punchline worked and if the, and if the uh, audience, you know, picked up on it and if they laugh. And it, it, so, it means so much to me when, when a joke I wrote, you know, at a specific point works, you know. Um, my mom, as far as inspiration, my mom worked for Simon and Schuster, and the like, the number one publishing company in the world, I guess. And and she actually worked for Schuster. She was Schuster's secretary back in the 1950s. Um, and she used to tell me when I was a kid, you know, she, Joe DiMaggio came in today, or you know, or not today, but when she was there, and 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 famous writers would come. Man, and and it inspired me. I'm like, yeah, I'd I'd like to do that. <laughs> Can you, you know, stay in touch with this guy Schuster? He's going to be a good guy to know. You know, um, unfortunately, my mom passed away a few years ago uh, before the novel came out. Um, but uh, but but she got to see a lot of my plays and and read a lot of my stories. And so um, you know, there was always that connection. So becoming an author was really the last frontier for me. Um, I, I wrote for cable TV, I wrote for theater, uh, I was a copywriter for a while, I, I was um, a sports journalist for a while, I owned my own business for a while, and I did all the PR and marketing and press releases, so I, I really run the gamut, and I was always kind of keeping uh, books, which I think is, you know, the hardest nut to crack, um, for the end. So I saved it until basically I retired and I had more time uh, to devote. And, and I do. I, I write every day. I spend several hours a day writing and editing. And, you know, it paid off. <laughs> this, um, you know, was, was purchased and, uh, and it's out there now. It's out in the world. So um, that's pretty much, um, you know, what happened as far as why become an author and when, you know, I saved it. And I, and later on, when, when we talk about advice for writers, I'm going to suggest they do something similar. And that is write smaller, go for smaller things first, get your feet wet, and then you can move on to writing a book because a book is just a whole different animal. The favorite part of the journey for me is getting lost in my work. Um, I like to create three-dimensional characters, whether it's for a book or a play or whatever it is, um, with layers. And, um, and what I do is, I, the, the, the better you write the character characters, the more fun you can have letting them kind of write the book for you or write the play for you. Um, I don't know if you've experienced this as a writer, but I find that I just kind of create the characters and then I kind of set them loose and I let them talk and I listen. I just, I mean, I type it down, but I'm listening really to their conversation and to, to their actions and to their emotions and to uh, whatever it is um, that is going on between them. And, and that's how I, I kind of write. I, um, it, it, is, it is a favorite part of the journey because it, it's, it's, you don't have to sit there and think about it. You just created the characters and let them go at it. And so I, I know it sounds a little weird to hear, you know, because you have to write it, you have to type it, but really one character says something, the other one reacts to it, and, and now you got something going on, you know, that you may not have thought about, you know, it just came to you. And, and, and 
that's what I enjoy most is just getting lost in my characters and lost in the story and seeing how it develops. Um, I wanted to add, um, oh, I know what I wanted to say. So for this book that just, that just came out, Behind the Fourth Wall, um, I outlined, ba basically outlined every single chapter. Uh, and I have like almost, I think 40 chapters or 39 chapters in the book. Um, there were only a few that I, I didn't outline because I didn't really know what I was going to do with those chapters. And I found that when I got up to that point, um, those, the ones that I didn't outline were my favorite. I, because I was able to let go. And, and I, and so for this book that I'm writing now, uh, which we'll talk about, uh, I didn't outline it. All I did was I, I, I came up with a protagonist at this point in his life. And I decided this is where he's going to end up at that point. And I don't know anything else other than I put him in a certain area, which happens to be Coney Island, Brooklyn, which is where I'm from. And it's post-World War II, uh, right after the war. And, and I created a family for him and I let them, I let them <laughs> write the book. I know that sounds weird, but um, I've heard it from other writers too. You just, anyway, that's been my favorite part of the journey. Well, it's always fun too when you're writing like that and then you're like, oh, I didn't expect that to happen. <laughs> exactly, exactly. It just shows up. <laughs> it's a great moment. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's fun, fun. And it and it and it adds so much to the work because because if you outline it, it's like it's you gotta kind of stick to it. I mean, you don't have to stick to it, but basically it's right there in front of you. If you don't outline it, you never know what's gonna come. You know, something a conversation you heard yesterday might affect the way you're writing today or a story that somebody told you, you know, whatever you can, in, you could include that in the work and, and make the work better than when you sat down to write your outline. No, I agree. That's a lot of fun. What would you say is one of your biggest challenges as an author right now? Okay. Um, so I, I, I know we had discussed the questions and I kind of broke that down to um, a challenge marketing this book, which is what I'm in the process of doing, and then the challenge of, of, of writing a book. So I, I've separated the two. So let me, let, me, uh, let me explain. So for marketing uh, your book, because I, I don't, you know, whoever you're with, whatever publisher you're with, or if you self-publish, um, there's a lot of work involved. Either way, <laughs> whether you have a publisher, don't have a publisher, there's, you have to promote your own book. You have to promote yourself. You have to promote your brand. Uh, you have to get reviews. You have to get, um, you have to get it to the right people. Um, uh, today, in fact, I sent a package, uh, and I'll show you a little, in a few minutes, exactly what I sent to a producer at NPR. Uh, I somebody suggested to me that there's this show that they do uh, on Cape Cod, and um, I called them yesterday. I found uh, I I got to the host of the show. She said, "Talk to the producer. Here's her name. Here's her number." So I did, and she and I sent her my book, and I sent her a package, and I'm hoping that she reads it and um, likes it enough to call me back and, uh, and, and interview me. So the marketing is really the toughest part once you have a book. You probably have found that yourself. Um, as far as writing the book, writing a book, the biggest challenge is finishing it. And you have to love your book. I know a professor, uh, I think at NYU said to me, said to the class that whatever you write, you have to love it because you're gonna wake up <laughs> three in the morning someday and you're going to look at that you know screen you're going to look at your book and if you don't love it you're going back to bed you know you have to love what you do and you have to love what you write and and you know writing a novel is it's a long-term process you don't just I can write a, a one-act play in a week I mean it's it, and get it up on stage and see see the audience response writing a book I mean my uh this book took me 
uh, altogether three years from the time I started it until the day it was published. You know, that's a long time, three years, you know? So you have to love, love what you're doing, love your work, love your, the book you're writing. Um, and you have to write it, you have to finish it. And then there's the whole thing about, you know, getting feedback, getting beta readers to read it, getting an editor, uh, you know, writing the dreaded query letter and synopsis and trying to get an agent. I mean, there's so much more work involved up and, and, and over writing the book, you know? So uh, luckily I've, I've gone past that step already for this book, because this is out. And now I'm more busy with the marketing side of it. This book is not my first book. This is my second book that I wrote. The first book I wrote, it was called Dante's Sin. It was kind of, um, I, it was sort of a modern uh, Dante's Divine Comedy, if you're familiar with that, which is like a 15th century book from Italy. Um, and, and I modernized it and brought it up to date. And, uh, and it's a satire. And I found out after I wrote the book, and that book took me six years to write from beginning. Uh, it actually only took two years, but there was a four-year lull in between before I got back to it and finished it. So overall, it took me six years. Um, and what I found was that if your name isn't Mark Twain or Voltaire or George Plimpton, um, you can't really write a satire because nobody really cares about you and your satire. So that's what I found out. It was a six-year learning curve and... Um, after six years and after trying to get it published and not getting it published uh, and having some people read it who didn't give me the best feedback that, or the kind of feedback I, I was looking for, uh, I put it in the drawer, in my drawer of my desk. And that's where it sits uh, till this day and probably always will, unless I become rich and famous and someone says, hey, you have another book? And I go, oh yeah, I remember this one. It's a satire. Oh, we don't care. Um, satires are hard, so I recommend you not write a satire. Um, the, the other biggest challenge for me is getting an agent, um, because it, when you get into writing books and you find out that in order to get an agent, you have to write, write a query letter, and it's got to be the quintessential <laughs> query letter, and you have to write a synopsis, which is really no fun, because it's taking your 90,000 word novel and condensing it into one or two pages. And that's kind of a hard thing to do because um, you have to leave out a lot. Um, so getting an agent for me is another challenge I face. And I'm hoping that, um, you know, if people hear about my book and they get the book, they buy the book and they review the book and they leave reviews um, and I get enough good reviews, I'm hoping uh, somehow I will get an agent. Maybe that'll be a step closer to getting an agent for me. But that is certainly a challenge that I'm, I'm still facing. Thank you. You're and welcome. what advice would you give to someone trying to write his or her first book? Now, this I thought about. I really did. I thought about it a long time. So the first thing I, I would say to a new writer is read lots of books. Hemingway, Steinbeck, Bernard Malamud, Stephen King, Dan Brown, Donna Tartt, these are the best teachers in the world. And, and they don't cost a lot. You don't have to pay an arm and a leg for their class. Get their books and read them. Read books in, in the genre you want to write in. Read books in other genres because it'll, it'll, round, it'll help round you out. It'll give you more information that you'll need. Uh, you may decide you want, a different, you want to write in a different genre. So certainly reading books is number one, top, top thing. Uh, number two is to keep writing and to try to write every day. Um, and, you know, there's so many opportunities now online. Uh, I write for um, medium.com. I write essays uh, when the thoughts occur to me and, and I put them and I publish them online. Anybody can do it. It's free. You don't need, you know, you don't need an agent for it. You don't need a publisher for it. There's, I'm sure there's plenty of others. Um, so, so write small, write an essay, write a short story, write a play, whatever it is. Um, uh, but write, you know, I, I, I would suggest to a new writer to hold off on writing a book because a book is, is a, as I said, is a long-term project. Um, once you get your feet wet, you know, writing, 
online, maybe you get a gig, maybe somebody pays you for your first article and you, and you, and you put that and you hang up that check on your wall, you know, then you start getting more confident and, and you start making connections. Um, I, I just think it's better to start small and work your way up to, to an owl, unless, unless, you know, if you're totally confident that you can do that and that you believe in yourself, um, then you could go for it. I mean, if that, I mean, it's, it's going to take you a few years. You don't, you know, it's hard to get a book published, um, even if it's great. Um, and I, uh, so that's why I would suggest to new writers to start smaller, start with shorter stories, start with a one act play, a poem, whatever it is, whatever you enjoy writing, do that for a while, you know, try to get, you know, a paid gig out of it, you know, start doing it regularly, maybe it becomes your full time job, um, whatever, and, and then once you've had that experience and that confidence, then if you want to attack writing a book, I would say, hold off for that. That's my advice. No, I'd agree that it's, it's almost a matter of training your brain to believe that you can complete something. Right. And then you just get bigger and bigger and it becomes a lot easier. And like you said, your confidence grows. Absolutely. So do you have a story or any other experiences that you'd like to share? So my mother... <laughs> who worked for Simon & Schuster um, and kind of inspired me because of the story she used to tell me. Um, so when I was in college, uh, she asked me what I wanted to do with my life. And I said, I want to be a writer. And she thought about it and she hemmed and hawed a little. And she said, why don't you think about becoming a teacher and you can always do writing on the side? And she has no idea how much that hurt. It really did hurt. I mean, I wanted her to say, go for it. You know, if that's what you want to do with your life, you know, I'm behind you. Uh, and I, and that's what I've done for my, I have three sons, uh, for each of them, whatever they wanted to do. We, my wife and I always, you know, showed, you know, our enthusiasm for it. And we told them to absolutely go for it. I mean, go for it. If you don't make it fine, you can always change your mind. But um, so anyway, so my mom kind of disappointed me by, by saying that. And I, you know what? I didn't listen to her. I, I went for the writing, uh, despite what she said. And uh, it took a little while to get started. But once it did, uh, I was able to keep, you know, keep writing jobs, um, keep getting writing jobs. And um, and it worked for me. So don't listen to your mother. <laughs> don't listen to anyone. Seriously, listen to yourself, listen to your heart, what you want. And if you want to go for it, just go for it. You know, just do it. What do yeah. you do to promote your books? Uh, I find reviewers and I contact them. I find podcasters like yourself. Um, I donated one of my books to my local library. And they're going to have me, they're going to do a reading and a signing in, during the summer. So uh, libraries are helpful. Um, getting in touch with your local bookstore, uh, because they will promote you. Um, getting in touch with writing groups uh, in your area and online. Uh, get your local media involved. And I have a show and tell for that. So this is an article, a small article, but a picture of my book from the Cape Cod Times that came out the week my book was released, which was in January. Here is the Cape News with a picture of me with my books and a full article on the front page of their arts and... Did I screw that up? I think I did, sorry. <laughs> Wrong way, on their arts and culture page full article. I'm right next to Billy Joel. Um, so that was cool. So certainly local media um, is helpful to get them involved. And they're always looking for local uh, artists and writers um, and talent, you know, so that they can let everybody know what's going on in their area. Um, I said I was, I brought some 
show and tell things. So having a press release, luckily when I own my own business, I learned how to write these uh, is good because when you send, you need a press release to send to the media to let them know that your book just came out and you want them to cover it. And you, so that's another thing. Um, a one sheet, this is called a one sheet. This is a picture of my book with, with quotes, uh, blurbs from other authors, from, um, from uh, professional reviewers. There's a couple of them in here. Sublime is in there, Reedsy is in there. And then a few uh, authors that I know gave me blurbs for the book. That's always helpful. And then because I'm a playwright and I've done some plays and I did a play with this theater uh, just outside of Boston, um, I went to see the show Love Letters in February. And if you open it up, there I am again. They're promoting me and my book because they are, we're going to have a reading and a signing in June. And here I am in their program, which everyone gets when they, when they come into the theater to see any of their plays. So, I mean, those are just some ideas um, that work for me. Hopefully they'll work for, you know, write other writers too. And, you know, and, and I, I got some of that advice from other writers. So it's always good to talk to other writers because everybody has ideas how to promote the book. And do you use any paid advertising or organic traffic sources? So paid advertising we're talking about. So I, when the book first came out, I did run a couple of ads through my publisher um, that I, I don't know how, mu how much good they did. I mean, I was told that my book was downloaded by 3,500 readers um, because we were doing a free weekend promotion that you can download it for free for, for a couple of days. And the, at the end result was, I was told there were 3,500 people who downloaded my book. So that sounds really good. Um, what did that translate to as far as actual worth? Uh, I think it added 10 or 15 reviews on Amazon. Most of them were good. Just about all of them were good. A couple clunk, clunkers there, but so 3,500 downloads added up to about 15 reviews on Amazon. So I don't know, was it worth it? Probably not, but it, it did get me some, you know, and which I was glad. And, and, and most of the people who left the reviews and enjoyed the book. So that was all good. And I'll probably do more uh, ads at some point during, uh, during the year. It's a long-term thing, even promoting your book. I don't have to do it today or yesterday just because the book came out in January. Um, so, uh, and I'd like to enter contests too, to help promote the book. You know, you win a contest, that's about the best marketing you can do for your own book. Um, I know we just touched on my new book that I'm working on. Uh, I don't have a title for it yet. It is, as I said, about post-World War II Coney Island. It's about, um, about a Jewish family uh, I am Jewish, and so I, I write from what I know, and it's, it's, a, it's about family breakdown and the relationship between a father and his son, um, and I'm having a blast writing it because I'm, I'm bringing back all the stuff that I went through getting ready for my bar mitzvah and what, you know, what that was like, and, and, um, and, and it's, there's a lot of funny, funny stuff in it. I've, I've had some people read it, and they're enjoying it as well. Um, as far as this book, uh, all I can ask of people is, um, please give it a chance, read it. And if you like it, leave, leave a review because reviews, as you probably know, are our best friend, uh, Amazon review, Goodreads review gets people talking about your book, uh, thinking about it. Um, Barnes and Noble is another one. Uh, where, wherever you can leave a review, it, it becomes helpful. Um, and uh, if you're in the Boston area, June 15th, I'll be reading from the book and signing books. It's the Curtain Call Theater. Uh, I also have a website, my name, michaelsalamowitz.com. And this is how you spell it, if you need to spell it. <laughs> and um, that's about all I've got. Awesome. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. My pleasure. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Uh, it was a pleasure talking to you.